Okay, guys, so today we're going to work on 6.1, um, angles and their measure. <clears throat> um, so this is a pretty light section. We're just going to do a little bit. I think for many of you, this might be a review. Um, sometimes the prereq to take pre-calc um, at one of the districts I work for um, is to already have taken trigonometry. So um, for some of you, this might be a real breeze. If not, those of you that this is completely new to you, um, just keep in mind um, that you can always ask me questions during meetings if the videos are too quick um, and we can go over some things that maybe I left out. So first thing we want to make sure we know how to do is draw some angles. So in general, this is the starting point. This is the x-axis is like your starting point of your angle. Okay, so in general, uh, start your angle here. Okay, so we're going to go like that. <clears throat> and then um, if we want to do 135 degrees, you guys know that this is zero, this is 90 degrees, this is 180 degrees, this is 270 degrees, and this is back to 360 degrees. You always go in a counterclockwise fashion. Um, for positive angles and for negative angles, you go clockwise. So um, I'm going to go to 135. So if this is 90, I would say 135 is probably right about here. Right, so let's say that's my angle. And this is the angle 135 degrees, okay? So that's how you draw an angle, no big deal. Let's just do one, a couple more of these together. So 60 degrees would be somewhere right here, right? So we have something like that. And then this would be, oops, 60 degrees. Now keep in mind, um, oftentimes this side right here is called the terminal side of the angle where it ends, right? And this is the initial side <clears throat> um, where it starts. So uh, oftentimes, I don't, I don't really think a lot of people talk about it as the initial side. You mostly hear about the terminal side because everybody knows it starts at zero. Um, 120 degrees negative, however, you have to make sure that you go now clockwise. So this would be, so we're here and we want to end up going, well, here's negative 90. And then we want to go negative 120, so that's another 30. So that's right about there. So I'm going to draw my angle like that. And that would be negative 120 degrees. Now, 450, we're going to start here, right? And then we're going to wind it around a full 360. So we're going to go around a full 360. There's 360, but then we need to go around another 90 to get to 450. So I'm right here. So we end up right there, okay? So this is 450 degrees. Now, the thing that comes up is 450 degrees. If I drew this also, wouldn't it 450 degrees look an awful lot like um, 90 degrees, right? That's a 90 degree angle and 450 degrees looks the same. So these are called coterminal angles. Um, oftentimes they'll be referred to as this, are coterminal, meaning they end in the same location, so they create the same angle. Um, this is something that comes up a lot in trigonometry. So, you know, 90 degrees is the same as 450. If you add another 360 to that, you get the exact same, what would that be, 810, I believe? Yeah, 810 would also be in the exact same location, and we could do this forever. So um, something important to remember about um, angles is you can keep recycling them by adding 360, and you'll get back to the same location, um, or subtracting 360, depending on what you're working with. And um, they end in the same spot, and that matters a lot for trigonometry, angles ending in the same spot, okay? Um, something that we're not going to spend too much time on, but um, I just have to go over it, is converting to decimals. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take something that's in, um, let's say for example, we have 61 degrees, 42 minutes, 21 seconds. Now I really have not ever used this type of measurement myself, but I could see them, I think I've seen this used in like um, ship problems where they're talking about uh, longitude and latitude and things like that. Um, so for us, we're just going to do it so we know how to do it, but it's not going to be a huge uh, portion of this class. Okay, and I just want you to see where the idea comes from. So what you do 
in order to convert this to decimal is you take the degree and you just do 61 plus now how many min this is considered minutes right here this is minutes and this is seconds and this is degrees okay so what we're going to do is we're going to take 42 minutes now how many um, minutes are in an hour so it's going to be 42 minutes out of 60 all right now how many seconds are in an hour well 60 minutes with 60 seconds per minute that's 3600 this is just the conversion uh, once again it's not a huge portion of this class but i just want to make sure you guys understand where it came from um, that's why they call it degrees minutes and seconds and then this becomes 61 now on my calculator i'm going to do 42 divided by 60 and i get 0.7 so this is plus 0.7 now 21 divided by 3600 I get 0 0.0058333 so I'm just going to do 0 0.0583583 bar so then what I can do is I can say that this is 61.70583 bar or if you want to approximate 61.7 degrees okay so this is how you can convert um degrees minutes and seconds to decimals okay <clears throat> now um, there's another one we can do um we can go the other way now we can convert um two degrees minutes and seconds so if i give you 61.24 degrees right and i want you to turn that into minutes and turn that into seconds you do it in a very similar fashion so you take 61 and you kind of leave it off on the side and then you add 0.24 times 60. so notice over here we were dividing by 60 now we're going to multiply by 60. okay and let's see what we get we get 61 plus 14.4, um, let's see here, 14.4 minutes, okay? But we don't want the decimal, so we're gonna take this and do 61 plus 14 minutes, plus now we're gonna take the decimal from this guy right here, we're gonna do 0.4 times 60 again. Okay, because we already multiplied by 60. And now if we multiply by 60 again times that 0.4, that technically is multiplying by 3600, right? Because we did 60 to get the 0.4 and now we're gonna do 60 again. So now we're gonna get 61 plus 14, 61 degrees plus 14 minutes plus, now this should be 24 seconds now. So when we rewrite everything, we get 61 degrees, 14 minutes, 24 seconds and that's how you can convert these two so when you see these um, in the homework again this is not a huge part of the class i just want to make sure that i've gone over it i have not used this in my life too often um, but i don't know if any of you are going to go on to be you know nauticalist instructors or um working in engineering where this becomes a big deal because it's very accurate i i'm not exactly sure how um this pertains um, to real world application but like i said I, I have a feeling it has to do with longitude and latitude and and I think I've seen some problems with ships where they talk about this. Um, but for us, that'll be good enough for now. So we did our job. We converted 61.24 degrees to 61 degrees, 14 minutes and 24 seconds. <clears throat> um, the next thing I wanna talk about in this section is what a radian is, okay? So it's very important that you understand a radian. A radian, so one radian is the measure of the central angle whose arc length is the same as the radius. So, so understand that it doesn't matter what size circle you draw. So if I draw a big giant circle over here, okay, it has a radius from here to here, okay? Now I can draw an arc length that has that same distance and it'll be right about there again, okay? That's gonna be right in the same spot as over here, okay? <clears throat> so in general, one radian is about 57.3 degrees. It's basically saying 
that you draw this arc length until the arc length is just as long as the radius. That's why it's called one radian, okay? And it takes about six, six, a little over six of these. Yeah, six point something of these um, to equal a um, full two pi around a circle. Because remember, we normally think about a circle um, from here is 180 degrees, then 360 degrees. Right, so the entire distance around is 360 degrees, right? So <clears throat> if you were thinking circumference, you would get um, circumference is two pi r, right? <clears throat> so that's why the idea of one full rotation is two pi, okay? So what we're gonna do is we kind of have this in the back of our mind, but we're not gonna use 57.3 very often, that's just, if somebody ever asks you how much a radian is, it's about 57.3 degrees. But what a radian really is, is the radius and the arc length are the same length. Whatever angle created that, that's one radian. And it'll be the same here, same location as here, right? So we're doing the same thing. Doesn't matter the size of the circle. I could draw a little tiny circle, right? I could draw a little tiny circle like this. And then when I draw my radius right there, and then I go to draw the arc length that's the same, it'll be right about there. This distance from here will be the same as this distance through the radius. So it doesn't matter what size circle, it'll always be the same. So a way that we can convert is we can say that one degree is worth pi over 80 radians, or one radian is worth 180 over pi degrees. Okay, or <clears throat> um, 360 divided by two pi. Okay, basically it comes from this idea that 360 degrees is equal to two pi, the entire distance or around a circle. Now, the thing you wanna keep in mind is that <clears throat> um, a radian is an actual length. It's an actual length. A degree is a different type of measurement. A degree is a, a way that we measure things um, on a protractor. It's, it's each little tick mark has a certain um, location to us on a protractor. It's the idea of that. Um, radians are actually better because they are represented by an actual tangible length, okay? Um, so in most physics problems and harder application word problems, um, radians are the only way to go. They normally try to do everything they can to get away from degrees and get into radians. So if any of you take physics, you'll wanna um, always work with radians because it translates into the formulas better. So um, I just wanna practice a few times converting the following to radians. So we know that 60 degrees is worth, so we're just gonna take 60 and we're gonna multiply it times pi over 180 degrees, okay? So we're trying to see how many radians 60 degree is. Now we know that 57.3 degrees is one radian and this is 60. So we would expect this to be a little bit larger than one radian. So whenever you are converting degrees to radians, you use pi over 180. You use this one right here. Whenever you are converting from degrees to radians, I'm sorry, from radians to degrees, you use this one right here. So now I just do a little bit of canceling. This cancels with this, this is a three. So we end up with pi over three. So 60 degrees is equivalent to pi over three radians. And in general, you don't write the label radian, you can if you want, but um, when you write pi over three, everybody knows that's, uh, you're, when you're talking about angular measure, you're talking about um, radians. So 60 degrees is worth pi over three which is just a little bit over one. If you do that on your calculator, you got about 3.14 divided by three, just a little bit over one, which we knew it would be. 150 degrees, so I'm gonna just take 150 degrees and I'm gonna multiply it times pi over 180. And this is going to cancel and cancel. We divide each of these by 30. We should get a five here, divide this by 30, we should get a six. So this is five pi over six. So 150 degrees is worth five pi over six. All right, now we wanna be able to go the other way. So we're gonna multiply this three pi over two times. Now we're gonna do 180 over pi. We're gonna go the other way. So the pi's will cancel, the two and the 180 will cancel. This is a one, this is a one, this is a 90. So three pi halves is 270 degrees. Okay, now this one will be negative three pi over four. And we're gonna multiply this by, once again, 180 over pi and this will become 
cancel, 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 cancel. Uh, what is this, 45 times negative three, so it'd be negative 135 degrees, I believe. Okay, now what if you don't want to use negative numbers? What you could do is you could take and find the positive version of this. So negative 135 degrees, well, here's the starting point. We're gonna go negative 100, or that's negative 90, and then another negative 45, that's right there, right? So we have this angle, negative 135 degrees, okay? However, there's another angle that would end in the same spot with the same terminal side. We could go here, and we would also end right here. We could get the same angle, or I shouldn't say the same angle, but it would end in the same location, okay? So that means that coterminal um, angle, or the positive version of this, could be, what is that? 180 plus another 45. So that would be 225 degrees. So you could use either one of these as an answer, depending on how it's worded, if they want the positive or the negative, okay? Um, so either one of these would be the correct answer, once again, depending on the wording in the problem. Um, one little thing on arc length. So since radians are based on arc length, we wanna know how to find the arc length. We use this formula right here. Arc length S is equal to R radius times theta. The catch is, is theta must always be in radians, okay? Must always be in radians, okay? So find the arc length if, and then I give you two problems. So pause the video and see if you can just plug these into the formula and get it to work. Okay, so hopefully you guys unpause the video and um, we're both gonna end up in the same spot. So we have S equals R, which is six feet, times theta, which is two radians. So this becomes 12 feet. And that's why you like to use radians because it's already in terms of a length. So, you know, six, a length times a length is just gonna be some new length, which is 12 feet. So it's a nice, easy problem, no big deal, right? Now this one, um, they try to fool you a little bit. You say S equals, and then you do three meters times theta, but theta is 120. So I'm gonna convert one, I'm sorry, theta is 120 degrees. So you cannot do this, you have to convert it to a radian. So we're gonna say 120 degrees times pi over 180, and this will become cancel, cancel. Uh, if we divide both of these by 60, we get two over three. So this is two pi over three. So I'm gonna multiply two pi over three times this, and we should end up with, let's just double check, um, what the three they're going to cancel and we're going to be left with two pi meters. Okay. So um, again, not to, oops, not meters, meters. Okay. So um, let's see here. We have two pi meters. We have 12 feet. So we found arc length. And again, this is just a formula problem. Um, down the road in calculus, when we're asked to find arc length, uh, it's going to be much, much different. Um, because it won't be the arc length of a circle, it'll be the arc length of, um, you know, some shape. I'll give you some shape like this. And then I'll ask you to find the arc length from like here to there. Okay, so there's no formula for that. So we have to build our own formula. But for now, we're using arc length um, on a circle. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, here we're going to deal with area of a sector. So area of a sector, when you're talking about a circle, right? and you draw your angle, let's say that you go from here, um, let's say from here to here, and then you shade this in. So this is called a sector, okay? So in order to find the area of a sector of a circle, we use this formula, A equals one half R squared times theta, all right? So again, not anything too crazy, just this is a nice little easy section as an intro section. So if we wanna find the area of a sector, um, where the radius is two feet, oops, I erased the T, two feet, and theta is 30 degrees. Once again, theta must be in radians, so we have to convert it. So theta is equal to 30 degrees times pi over 180 degrees. Okay, so this will cancel, this will become one, this will cancel, and this will become six. So theta equals pi over six. By the way, um, something to also keep in mind, the reason that this works is because you're multiplying 30 degrees by one. Remember pi over 180 degrees 
is worth one because pi is, um, I know it's, it's in terms of revolutions of a circle, if you have a circle and it's a unit circle and you go from here to here, that is 180 degrees, but that is also an arc length of pi. So when you take pi and divide it by 180 degrees, you get one. So really we're just multiplying by one, okay? That's why you're allowed to do this. This is called a um, unit conversion, I believe is the, the fancy name for it. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, because it's one unit. Um, so we have pi over six. So now we can find our area is equal to one half r squared, which would be two squared times theta, but theta is pi over six. So this becomes, uh, let's see, four pi over 12, which is pi over three. So we have pi over three feet squared, right? Because when you take r squared, you do two feet times two feet, you get four feet squared, okay? Um, so let's see here, yep, pi over three, and that would be our answer, and we're good. So now you guys real quick, take a minute to do this one, pause the video, go ahead and make sure you can find R um, using our sector formula. All right, so we know that the area of a sector is worth six centimeters squared equals, now we know it's R times one R, it's one half, let me write this better, one half R, but we don't know R, oops times theta, which is already in radians, which is nice, okay? So it becomes six centimeters squared is equal to, um, let's see here, one half R, oh, one eighth, sorry about that. Let me see, did I do this one right? Okay, so then we end up with, oh, wait a minute, it's R squared. That's why I was wondering what was wrong. I forgot the formula. So R squared, okay. So then this becomes six centimeters squared. We can drop the centimeter squared for now, divided by, let me make sure I didn't make a mistake here, one fourth times one half, so that's one eight. So we got to multiply by eight. Sorry about that, you guys, I lost my train of thought. Eight over one, eight over one, these cancel. And then we're left with 48 equals R squared. Then we square root both sides. Now, normally we do plus or minus, right? But you know you cannot um, have a negative radius, so we're only gonna take the plus. And then we know 48 has what? Eight and a six or um, let's see here, four times 12. So I think it's gonna be four square roots of three is equal to R. Um, and this would be centimeters. All I did, you guys, those of you that aren't too good at radicals, um, the way I break up my radicals is I just do 48 is eight times six. That's really four times two. That's really two times three. And I just break them down into primes. Not always, but if, if it's too annoying to try to figure it out, I just break it down. So you need a pair of twos, and here's another, oops, here's another pair of twos. So I take this pair of two out right there, and I take this pair of two out and put it there, and then I leave the three behind. This becomes four square root of three. That's how I, I clean up my radicals. Whatever works for you guys, um, but that's how you simplify radicals. So we get four square roots of three equals my R. Okay, um, so I'm going to post a couple more videos um, probably um, in the next couple hours, um, but that'll do it for this video, guys. Um, again, nice little intro section, um, nothing too crazy, lots of little formulas, but nothing crazy. Um, and that's going to do it for 6.1. Take care, everybody, um, and I will see you in the next meeting.